I'm Leanna, and today I'm going to tell you what to do your first week playing Stardew Valley. Whenever I stream Stardew Valley on Twitch or post clips on TikTok, I have a lot of people ask me for tips for beginners or what to do when you first start the game. I figure the best way to help you out is to show you by walking you through the first seven days in Stardew Valley so you can get the hang of it, so that's what I'm going to do today. The first thing you're going to do when you show up in Stardew Valley is talk to Robin, the local carpenter, and Mayor Lewis. After this talk, you'll wake up the next day in your new home. The first thing that I do when I wake up in my new farm is pick up the parsnip seeds and watch the channels on the TV. You'll want to watch the TV every day to learn new recipes, game tips, and how lucky you'll be that day, which mostly affects fishing and mining. After this, I clear off some space for the parsnips as well as clearing out some fiber around the farm to help get around. I focus on the fiber because using the scythe doesn't take energy and we don't have a lot of energy since we're at the beginning of the game. I'm finally ready to plant my first crops of the season, so I go ahead and till out the soil. I like to do squares of 9 or rows of 3 because of how the watering can upgrades work. Your first watering can upgrade will allow you to water 3 squares at once instead of 1. So this is just kind of planning for that. Um, I also just like the way it looks when you put paths in between, which you'll see me do later on in the video. Now that I've laid down my first seeds, I've decided that before I plant them, I'm going to go to Pierre's to buy some more seeds since we have a little bit of money. But before I do that, I'm going to build a chest so I can store my items, since right now we only have 10 storage slots and that's just really not enough. Once I've built my chest, I sit at the front of my farm for easy access, and I sit the rest of my stuff in there, and I head off into town. I find some forageables on the way, which is going to be the best way for you to gain energy at the beginning of the game, because it's free and you don't have to buy the expensive food from the saloon. I really recommend picking up foraging whenever you can. I meet the local townsfolk as I'm heading this way because it's one of your first tasks is to meet all of the townsfolk. I find the best way to do this is to just click on them and talk to them as you pass them. I think it's a lot easier than looking for them everywhere all over the town. Once I get to Pierre's, I decide on the seeds I'm going to buy. I end up picking up three parsnips and six green beans, which is all I can really afford at the moment, but we'll be back to buy more seeds later. I head back to the farm now, and I talk to more townsfolk on my way back, but I also make sure to go completely through the forest and to look for more forageables like I was talking about earlier. I only found a few items, but in a few days I'll be able to find more. Now that I've cleared out some of the fibers from the forest, there will be more chances for forageables to spawn. Finally, after I've cleared out all of the fibers and collected all the forageables from the forest, I head back to my farm, and I clear out more fibers from my farm as well, just so it's easier to walk through. I plant my parsnips and water them, and I start to run out of energy, so I eat some of the forageables that I found earlier. Finally, after I finish planting all my crops and watering them, I decide to head to the saloon because I have two more hours before midnight, which is when you usually want to head to bed, otherwise you'll wake up with less energy. I decide to head to the saloon because it doesn't cost any energy to talk to the townsfolk, and I might as well use the rest of my time in the day to introduce myself to the people I haven't met yet. Finally, I head back home and I go to bed to end the day and save our progress for our first day on our new farm. The next day, we wake up to a letter from Willie, who tells us to visit him on the beach because he's just come back from a fishing trip. I water my crops and head immediately down there because fishing is one of my favorite things in this game, and the second I can get a fishing pole, I fish right away. After the cutscene's over, I head to the beach and collect some stuff before I start fishing. I pick up some clams and I use my hoe on the worms that are wiggling in the soil. You want to do that anytime you see them because you can get clay or artifacts or special things you can donate to the museum from this. So it's really helpful to bring your hoe around everywhere you go. Then I go ahead and start fishing. I know a lot of people have trouble fishing, but my best advice is just to keep trying and that practice makes perfect. I know you hear that a lot, but in Stardew Valley, it actually literally does get easier as you get better so the longer you fish and the more fishing skill you build up the bigger your bar will become so it'll become easier to keep the fish staying on the bar you can also buy the training rod from willy for 25 gold a lot of people say that that helps them kind of get practice and stuff keep trying it it'll get easier as you go on and definitely as soon as you have enough money buy the upgraded fishing rod you could put bait on the upgraded fishing rod, which will make the fish bite much faster. 
After I've caught enough fish to fill up my inventory, I go ahead and sell some to Willie, and then I decide to go head back to Pierre's and buy some more crops now that I have more money. On my way to Pierre's, I accept a request from Gus for a wild horseradish because I can easily give him one and it's a quick way to make money. I settle on some potato seeds and I go back to the farm to go ahead and plant them, and then I go to the lake to do some more fishing. Once I'm at the lake, I decide to go ahead and fish until my inventory is full, and once it's full, I go over to Robin's house to meet some more of the townsfolk I haven't met yet, including Maru. I know from personal experience that Sebastian comes out of his room at 6.30pm, so yes, I did wait outside of his door patiently for him to come so I can talk to him. After I'm done talking to Sebastian, I head to the saloon so I can give Gus the horseradish he asked for and collect my money. And while I'm there, I talk to the townsfolk. Giving them gifts will help your relationships, but it also helps to just talk to them every day. So I recommend if you ever pass a townsfolk to just click on them and see if you can chat. Once I'm done at Gus's, I go to do some more fishing because I have a little bit more room now that I've eaten some of the forageables in my inventory and I just fish until my inventory is full again, and then I head back to the farm. Once I get back to the farm, I put all of my stuff in the shipping bin to sell, and I put the rest of my stuff away in my storage chest, and then I randomly decided that I wanted to make some paths, so I opened up my crafting menu and started crafting some wood paths to put around my crops. Um, this is mainly just for decoration, but it can also keep the weeds and other stuff from spreading to your crop so it's it's nice to have it there i think uh, i ended up running out of pathing so i end up finishing the paths the next day i also want to say that a lot of people like to recommend you save one of each thing so that way you have it for the community center once you unlock it or for tasks later on. I think that this is good advice, but you definitely wanna sell your fish and your crops at the beginning, just so you can get enough money to start building your other farm buildings and stuff. So I went ahead and finished the rest of my pathing before clearing out my stuff into the chests, and then I go down to the forest to do some more foraging to look for spring onions or anything else that might've popped up since the last time I looked through the forest. Once I'm done foraging, I go ahead and go fishing, and I just do this until my inventory is filled up. Once my inventory is full, I head to Willie's so I can clear it out and then go fishing again at the beach. I basically spent the entire day three fishing just so I can earn money, increase my fishing skill, and I'm trying to save up for the fiberglass fishing rod that takes bait, and that's 1,800 gold. I also want to mention that when you're fishing, if you see a treasure chest like this, you want to um, make sure to have the treasure chest go over the bars the same way you would your fish. If you have to release the fish from the bar, you can do that to get the treasure chest. Just make sure you don't let your fish bar go all the way down. The treasure chests are super helpful and also when you check your TV at the beginning of the day, if it says that it's going to be a lucky day, you'll have a better chance of getting better treasure from the treasure chest. And the same thing goes with when you unlock the mines. If you have a good luck day that day, you'll get better treasures from the mines. So once I'm done fishing, I go ahead and go back to my farm and do some clearing out. And then, like I always do at the end of the night, I go to the saloon and talk to the townsfolk to try to get my points up with them. Finally, now that I'm done for the day, I head home and I go to bed. We managed to reach level 1 foraging on this day, as well as level 2 fishing and level 1 mining, which is really nice. This is where we're going to wrap up part 1 of what to do your first week in Stardew Valley. Part 2 will be up next week. If you liked this video or if it helped you, please consider liking and subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me for Stardew Valley streams over on Twitch. I'm currently streaming my beach farm in Stardew Valley. And if you'd like to follow me on TikTok, I post short stream clips on there. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope to see you next time.